But why did Entity Framework interpret those relationships differently? If we look back in the classes, notice that in the Ninja class, I also have a foreign key property for clan ID. I put that in there because I wanted an easy way to be able to identify the clan if I happen to have the ID without having to worry about having an instance of the clan at my disposal. I did that to make my coding easier. If you look at Ninja Equipment, I don't happen to have a Ninja ID because my intention is always to identify the relationship between Ninja and their equipment through this equipment own list. So I don't anticipate needing to create a piece of Ninja equipment and just set the Ninja ID. So I didn't happen to have it in there. Now, while this looks nice and clean, not having the foreign key property in there, it's actually something that I strongly discourage. Having the foreign key may seem unnecessary in your class, and some people go as far as saying that it dirties their class. But there are places where you might pay heavily for asking Entity Framework to perform its work solely based on having this navigation property. You won't notice any problem while you won't notice any problems in the course as I'm working in the client-side applications, such as the console app I'll be using in the next module, and then the WPF application I'll be using in a later module. But when I get to using this model in web applications where things are disconnected, the problem will be very obvious, and I'll make sure you don't miss it. So for now, I'll leave the class just this way, because when we hit the problem later on, it's going to be a memorable lesson. And I'd rather you learn the lesson here than when you're working on your own software. So let's get back to understanding why Entity Framework understood the one-to-many relationship between Clan and Ninja, but between Ninja and Ninja Equipment, it inferred a zero or one-to-many relationship. The fact that I have Clan ID and it's an integer and an integer is non-nullable, then Entity Framework said, well, if clan ID can't possibly be nullable, then I must always have to have a clan. Therefore, this is going to be a one-to-many relationship. But I don't happen to have that in Ninja Equipment, so it didn't have anything to guide it to say, I must have a Ninja. Therefore, the assumption was, I don't necessarily have to have a Ninja for equipment. But I do want to ensure that every Ninja equipment has a Ninja. But I don't want to have to add the foreign key in there just to solve that problem. So there's a couple of ways I can solve that. The easiest way is to add the required data annotation to the Ninja property. Now I'm saying Ninja is required. Entity Framework comprehends that data annotation. So if I go back and look at the model again, voila, there I have a one-to-many relationship between Ninja and Ninja Equipment. Now there's another way to apply those rules, especially rules that are really about how these classes should map to the database and aren't related to the business rules of the classes. That's by overriding the conventions with what's called Fluent API configurations, and you can do that right in the DB Context class. So we're keeping that Entity Framework specific information within the Entity Framework space instead of applying it to our domain classes. But for getting started, this is the simplest way to solve that problem. So what you're seeing, what you've seen now is not only how Entity Framework inferred the model, but also how it can affect that interpretation of the model. Entity Framework will follow that rule all the way through to the database. It will infer that the database also has those same rules. Next, we'll take a look at how Code First is able to create a database for us. And when we see the database, we'll also get some insight into how Code First is inferring what the database that we're talking to is going to look like.